Let's look at acid base balance in the body. Now remember, when it comes to homeostasis, body temperature and pH are the two most important variables. So when you look at acids, these are materials that have an excess amount of hydrogen. Bases are just the opposite, not enough of it. So acids with their excess hydrogen content tend to release it when put into solution. Bases with low levels of hydrogen tend to accept them and take them out of solution. We have lots of buffering systems in the body. Between acidosis and alkalosis, acidosis is far more commonly the problem. So we need to do something about this excess hydrogen in the body. When you talk about the buffering systems, you can look at things like the carbonic acid bicarbonate on dissociation equation. That's that chemical reaction that shows CO2 on one side and hydrogen on the other. Remember, since that's a reversible chemical reaction, what happens to one of those materials happens to the other ones. So by balancing CO2, we can balance hydrogen. And that's why our respiratory system is our number one pH balancing system. Urinary is going to be the second most important. We have lots of proteins floating around in the fluids of the body. Most all proteins have a negative charge. Well, those negatives will neutralize the positive hydrogen. We also have lots of phosphate in the body. With its triple negative charge, that'll neutralize a lot of hydrogen too. So looking at our buffering systems, all the proteins floating around in the fluids is great for neutralizing the positive hydrogen. Hemoglobin is just one of those proteins listed there. Bicarbonate buffering system, again, balance the CO2, you'll balance the hydrogen. Respiratory system's great at that. Then all those phosphates with their triple negative charge help to neutralize the hydrogen too. So again, respiratory system, number one pH balancing system. When you balance CO2, you balance hydrogen. Again, more people have trouble with acidosis than alkalosis. So somebody gets acidosis, too much hydrogen, too much CO2. You got too much CO2 in you, you need to breathe faster because that'll get rid of the CO2 quicker, which will get rid of the hydrogen in the blood. Remember, you don't ever exhale hydrogen, but when you balance CO2, hydrogen balances with it. With alkalosis, not enough hydrogen, not enough CO2, you need to slow your breathing. That would hold CO2, giving you more hydrogen. You can often tell if a person has acidosis just by looking at them because they'd be breathing rapidly to get rid of that carbon dioxide. Kidneys, again, number two pH balancing system. Urine is practically always acidic because the kidneys are getting rid of that excess hydrogen. It's one thing that aldosterone tells the kidneys to do. But also to help with acidosis, the kidneys can reabsorb the HCO3. That bicarbonate has a negative, and by holding on to that negative material, that'll neutralize that positive hydrogen. So there's the respiratory system. Again, CO2 and hydrogen go hand in hand. Carbon dioxide levels rise, so will hydrogen. Remember, more hydrogen gives a lower pH number. So if you got too much CO2 and hydrogen, you need to breathe faster. And that's where a person is hyperventilating. Getting rid of that excess CO2 lowers the hydrogen levels. You see just the opposite with alkalosis. Again, alkalosis is where you don't have enough hydrogen, not enough CO2. You need to slow your breathing at that time there. So those are the hypo and hyperventilation working to balance that CO2 and hydrogen all together. Renal system, talking about the kidneys there. Again, they're always getting rid of the excess hydrogen but holding the negative bicarb to neutralize the hydrogen that's still in the body. So a lot of that HCO3 gets reabsorbed very rapidly as the hydrogen secretion continues. And again, one thing aldosterone does to the kidneys is tell it to get rid of that excess hydrogen. So more aldosterone can definitely help you with acidosis. We can see the secretion of hydrogen is often inhibited when the urine pH falls below 4.5. But looking at acidosis and alkalosis, remember there's two different types of each. Respiratory acidosis, and a respiratory alkalosis, and a metabolic acidosis, and a metabolic alkalosis. So looking at each one of these two types, respiratory and metabolic, we go to respiratory acidosis. Here are things, reasons why the respiratory system is causing acidosis in a person. And look at what's being caused here in one way or another. Inadequate ventilation, not moving enough air. If you don't move enough air, you won't get rid of the CO2. As it builds up, hydrogen builds up, you would get acidosis. 
out. If you're not moving enough air, you're going to hold that carbon dioxide. If somebody has an asthma attack, the air passageways become narrowed. If you don't move enough air, you hold too much CO2, you'll have too much hydrogen. Maybe the neurons in the brain that control the muscles of ventilation have been damaged. There again, you're not moving enough air. Same with emphysema. But look at metabolic causes of acidosis, right? Here's something besides the respiratory system causing this here. Maybe somebody's ingested too much aspirin. Aspirin is an acid. Consume too much acid, you would expect acidosis. Untreated diabetes mellitus, you tend to release a large number of keto acids. Remember, those are chemicals coming from fat cells in the body. So with diabetes, acidosis is common. Anaerobic respiration puts out a bunch of lactic acid. That would also cause acidosis there. But then go to the alkalosis. Again, you don't see this as often. Here's where the pH is too high instead of being too low. So look at some respiratory causes. Hyperventilation. If you're breathing too fast, you'll blow off too much CO2, which means too little hydrogen. Same thing happens when a person gets at high altitude to tend to hyperventilate. But look at metabolic causes of alkalosis, severe vomiting. If you vomit and lose a lot of hydrogen out of the stomach, stomach cells tend to pull more from the blood. Taking too much hydrogen out of the blood could cause alkalosis. Again, aldosterone tells the kidneys when to release hydrogen. If you release too much aldosterone, kidneys get rid of too much hydrogen. That could give you alkalosis. Or if somebody's consuming too much of bicarbonate on, things like Tums is often when that happens there. You consume something with a lot of negative charges, you'll neutralize too much hydrogen. And of course, that'll give you alkalosis there. So there are some good examples of respiratory and metabolic for each one of those acidosis and alkalosis.